And now, live in studio, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. Yes, here we are again, another day committed to picking a fight with the mainstream media, always providing you the timely truth centered around real estate, credit, finance, estate and tax plans, so much more. You're listening to the Consumer Quarterback Show. Our number one goals are to educate, entertain, enlighten, but most importantly, we want to engage so we can help you win. The only thing I'm addicted to right now is winning. Save our hotline number in your phone. At some point, you're going to need it. 813-670-7372. You used to call me on my cell phone. Also, make sure you bookmark our website, consumerqb.com. You can see links to all of our expert contributors there. The contact information will be right there on the website. You can also submit an email form directly through to myself and my team. So special guest for us today here, Chris Voss making his debut here on the Consumer Quarterback Show, published author, never split the difference, negotiating as if your life depended on it. Welcome to the Consumer Quarterback Show. Thank you, Brandon. Happy to be here. It's a pretty dramatic uh, title, negotiating as if your life depended on it, huh? It is. I love it, man. Great book, Chris. Top five books of all time, and I've listened Thank to you. it a dozen times, man. Over and over, I listen to the Audible Loop. So very entertaining, from uh, Haitian kidnappings to uh, negotiating with terrorists and real life stories of of your life and and what you've been through. Ex wives, divorce attorneys, everything, right? All those terrorists. <laughs> Yeah, that's good, man. It all falls under that that negotiation, uh, negotiating your kid's bedtime and those types of things. So we're both ex-quarterbacks. You were a quarterback in your teen years or young adult years. Is that right? It, that is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I love the I, lo I miss the sports days playing quarterback. So we bring that metaphor into the uh, consumer advocacy approach here in Tampa Bay. And uh, let's jump right into it, man. I, I love how you bring in these real life stories into negotiation in your book. And one of the ones that really caught my attention was the NFL versus the NFL Players Association ah, and the negotiations right. and the use of the fairness. Care to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, well, the you know the NFL owners are they're, they're, they're a tough group. I mean, there's a reason those guys are successful business people, and at that last impasse between the players and the owners, you know, the owners dropped the f bomb in the middle of the negotiation. They <laughs> so, did. You know, the f bomb is fair, fair. Boy, I tell you what, you know that that word comes up so much, and uh, and you know there was there was a struggle going on in the negotiations at the time. The players wanted the owners to open their books. Uh, Owners didn't want to open their books, so, you know, they just they did a great tactic. They held a press conference and said, we've given the players a fair offer, the F-bomb. You know, and I tell you what, you you knock the other side off balance when you drop the F-bomb on them, and, and it worked. I mean, uh, they settled, and uh, the players never saw the books. Yeah, that's interesting, man. A very cool story. Now, with the book, if you had to write a follow-up chapter to – and I'm sure you've gotten a lot of feedback over the, the years and the time that's passed. What would that chapter or two be on? You know, one of the biggest things that we're really negotiating on people or teaching people is, you know, what we refer to as proof of life of the deal. You know, we always had to have proof of life in a negotiation. Um, you know, first of all, in the kidnapping, we had to have proof of life just to find out whether or not the kidnappers we were talking to had the hostages. There's no short of Shortage of times when other bad guys find out about a kidnapping, they call a family or the company and claim to have the hostage. And, you know, they didn't. So, you mm -hmm. know, do they have the hostage and are they going to let them go? Um, there are a lot of fake opportunities in the business world, far more than we ever imagined. We estimate the number of business opportunities that are fake opportunities of being no less than 20 percent and probably somewhere between 50 and 80 percent. It's just. The opportunity is just not there. They're not going to go with you. They're looking for you to be a competing bid or they're looking to you for um, free consulting. Mm. And we teach people how to tease that out really early in the conversation 
so that you don't blow a lot of time on a deal you're never going to get. And that's so important as a salesperson these days. I'm in real estate. I own a Keller Williams uh, team here in Tampa Bay. And it's such an important part of the prospecting to closing, you know, getting that whole real estate transaction under contract and, and into a position where actually getting that commission check, which can be very elusive at some point. Uh, let's look at, you know, proof of life. The, the, I like what you said there. Now, something else I wanted to bring up is you've got your own company now, Black Swan LTD. Is that right? Black Swan Group. Now, with Black Swan Group, you're helping business owners, entrepreneurs uh, with their negotiation strategies. You're providing consulting. What's one of the biggest or most interesting types of deals that you've been involved with uh, on a higher level? Wow. You know, well, we're, we're, we're doing a fair amount of M&A globally, you know, but people trying to put companies together. Um, we're doing it... Um, because when you sell, when you're an owner of selling a company, I mean, you're selling your baby. You're gonna, you're gonna be. Everybody's emotional, but you're gonna be emotional in ways that the other side doesn't expect. So, we're doing a fair amount of uh, we're doing a fair amount of business to business negotiation. But we're doing, we've done the divorce negotiations. We've done insurance company negotiations. I mean, wherever wherever people are involved, I mean, we're jumping into the middle of it. Yeah, and Jeff Bezos just had a big divorce. What was his settlement? I think it was around thirty something billion with his wife. I don't know if you heard that one or read about it. Yeah, yeah, you know, I like Bezos. He, um, and they, you know, they, uh, the what was it alleged that the National Enquirer somebody was trying to drop embarrassing pictures on him, and 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 he he went straight at him. I mean, you got to admire a guy. Nobody's perfect. I mean, everybody should have the opportunity to get smarter every single day. And, that's right. I love the way that he handled the way he handled that. He took it head on. He didn't hide from anything. That was very cool. Yeah, that is. U.S. policy not to negotiation with terrorists or those that we deem as terrorist groups. Very interesting chapter in the book where you talked about that. Uh, would you elaborate a little bit for our listeners out there and our, our viewers on our TV show side? Yeah, you know, there's a subtle distinction here. Um, it's not that we don't negotiate with terrorists. We don't concede to terrorists. I mean, negotiation is a, is a great, can be a great weapon you know, on the right hands. And when I was handling our program, I said, you know, I didn't say we, nego we don't negotiate with terrorists. We negotiate against them. I mean, if anybody who understands negotiation knows that it can be very proactive, it can be a great offense. And if you, if you drop that as one of your tools in your arsenals and you know you're dropping one of the tools in your arsenal so the u.s we communicate with people there's strategic advantages to communicating it's just we don't make concessions and when we adopted that policy i think we saved a lot of lives yeah exactly there's a lot of great points in your book uh if you just joined us brandon rhymes here we're talking with chris voss he's an author never split the difference negotiating as if your life depended on it Excellent book. Highly recommend it. One of the next things that was interesting in your book is you talked about deadlines and how they don't really mean as much as some people think. And it was interesting how you asked the question, you know, in all your years of, of uh, negotiation and consulting, deadlines don't really mean as much as, as, we, as we often think they do. Right, Chris? Now, deadlines, you know, people are just trying to get some action out of the other side. They're trying to put some energy into the process. They're trying to, they're trying to make progress. I mean, that's, that's what deadlines are really about. I mean, the other side wants to know that something's going, and they think you're unorganized, so they're, you know, they're trying to give you a little incentive, make you, make you worry about something bad happening. And, you know, deadlines really fall away as soon as people think they're making progress. And, you know, I mean... I used to put a deadline on my son. My son is my director of operations now. Phenomenal. Turned into a phenomenal negotiator. Of course, what was the deadline? Well, he had a curfew when he was a teenager. And I tell you what, you know, and first of all, his friends used to give him a hard time. They're like, your dad's job is to talk people through deadlines and he gives you deadlines. <laughs> and sure enough, the kid learned, you know, if he'd call me, he'd, he'd be probably about a 10 minute drive from home and he'd have five minutes left for curfew where he'd try to get me on the phone 
about five minutes before he was supposed to be home as if, you know, like he talked me to the deadline as he's driving his car, he's talking to me on the phone and as he's walking up to the house, he's talking to me on the phone and, you know, but I want to know the progress was being made. I want to know that he was on his way home and that he was safe and that he wasn't drinking and driving or any of the things that you don't want kids to do. So the deadline was designed to create progress. And as soon as I knew the progress was being made in the direction I wanted to go, I felt pretty good about it. And that's what, that's what deadlines are about. Nice. And your son's name is Brandon and he's also highly involved with your organization. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. He's a, uh, he's, he's a company's chief negotiator. He's, and he teaches alongside us and, and, we have a great time. I mean, he's been dealing with me since he was two years old, so he's gotten pretty good at it. Yeah, I bet so. All right, we're coming into our first break here. Chris, do you mind taking us to break? And then we're going to come back with one more segment from Chris Voss, uh, author and educator. Yeah, I'll be happy to. This is Chris Voss, former FBI lead hostage negotiator and owner of the Black Swan Group. And you're listening to Consumer Quarterback Show, hosted by my friend Brandon Ryan. This is the Cannabis Podcast, powered by True Leave on Radio Influence. It's an inside look and the scientific facts in and around the world of medical cannabis. Now, here is your host, Ian Beckles. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. listening to the consumer quarterback brandon rhymes cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in tampa bay online at consumerqb.com and we're back brandon rhymes here host of the consumer quarterback show powered by the platinum mvp team at keller williams realty platinum mvp team 
platinummbptteam.com. Check out platinummbpteam.com. All right, we got special special guests, uh, Chris Voss, author of Never Split the Difference here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. We're going to jump right back into it here. And uh, Chris, one of the first chapter of your book, you were talking about the new rules. So there's a lot of old school methodology and negotiation that really doesn't stand firm uh, with what you learned at the FBI and, and, and dealing with real life people and real life emotions. And uh, would you, would you please elaborate on that a little bit for us? Yeah. Well, really the new rules of negotiation The new rules are let's, uh, it really is emotion based. And emotion isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's negative emotions that are bad things. Now, the hostage negotiation, we didn't know that we got focused right on it, but we were focused. Uh, the bad guys are going to be angry, upset, you know, want, seek revenge. They're going to have negative emotions. And we found it, that we focused on dealing with those and diffusing those. And we could make progress incredibly quickly. I mean, the, one of the crazy answers that I gave when people ask me the question, what's the difference between business interactions and hostage negotiations? And my answer is hostage negotiations are a lot more rational. <laughs> and it's because we knew how to get people into a rational frame of mind really quickly. And most business people don't. I mean, you know, there's a great book out there called Getting to Yes. And it's all about negotiation as a rational process. Well, we're not rational. The only, uh, the only time we're, we're actually rational or let's say the only time we're not emotional is when we're dead. You know, we're, we're, if we're breathing, we're emotional. And that's really one of the, the critical ideas, one of the new rules of the negotiation. Uh, you can't get away from emotions. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. When you think about the the emotions that are involved, in, and back in the day, they used to say, "Oh, we'll s separate the person from the emotion, separate the problem," and then, but how can you do that when people, as you say in your book, are emotional and irrational beings? You know, that's how we that's how we operate. Yeah, you can't you can't you can't separate. I mean, you can't separate their intellect from the person. You can't, and their your emotions are intertwined in your intellect. And then, you know, the the next to that too is it's. People say emotions are bad. Again, it's not emotions, it's negative emotions. I mean, there's positive emotions are actually required for good decision making. Stephen Collins, it's about the mindset of flow and how much more capable we are in this flow mindset. Well, the flow mindset is highly positive. You, you hear more, you see more, you make better decisions, you see patterns faster. You know, when, you know, I, it, when you were playing football, it was probably what you refer to as being in the zone. When you saw right. everything on the field, not only did you see everything on the field, but you saw what was going to happen before it happened. You saw where people were leaning. You saw, you know, you just saw everything and you computed it. That's the mindset of flow. That's a highly positive emotion. Now, it's the negative emotions that get in our way. So we just eliminate the negative emotions, not all of them, just the negative ones. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And when you when you eliminate that, the negatives and you focus on, is it kind of similar to that neural resonance, you know, the, the empathetic uh, listening where you're looking into someone's eyes, you're looking almost through their eyes, trying to go into their brain and, and just really understand where they're coming from, that tactical empathy that you talk about in the book. N neural resonance en enables you to, and then also when you're smiling, you know, putting that smile out there, that's going to help you get to that point of flow. Is that right, Chris? A hundred percent. Absolutely right. It's it's a real resonance. And people, you know, empathy, people have conflated and confused it these days with compassion. Like, how can I have, I got to have compassion to have empathy. That, that's not necessarily the case. Empathy is just really getting a great, as you said, I love that term, neural resonance with the other side, where you really got to feel for where they're coming from. And then you can, then you can, you can, you're proactive. You're not even reactive. You're getting out in front of what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. And that's such a big part is, is being proactive in business, uh, being proactive when it comes to, uh, you know, prospecting, if you're in real estate sales or whatever business you're on, uh, you're in. And it's interesting, uh, you know, the three types of yeses, that was, that was really cool in the chapter as well. You've got the counterfeit. Right. Yes. The commitment. Yes. And the confirmation. Yes. Cause too many times, uh, you, you had your chapter based on, uh, beware of yes and master no can would you elaborate on that chapter a little bit yeah you know i mean people are so addicted to hearing yes that other people learn really quickly all i got to do is say yes to you i don't mean it it's the counterfeit yes 
But if I want free consulting from you, you know, if I if if you're in real estate and uh, look, I want to I want to use my brother-in-law as the agent, but I want to make sure that my brother-in-law is the same marketing marketing plan as you. I say, yeah, come on and, you know, give me a 10 point marketing plan. I'd love to hear it. I'd, I'd love to sit there and listen to you tell me how you're going to how you're going to market my uh, my house. You know, I'm, I'm really interested. Yeah, I'm going to give you a legitimate chance. I, yes, I'm open to hearing what you have to say. I just need to know how you how you're going to do it. I, you know, that's a counterfeit. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. real estate people are some of the biggest victims of this. You know, they because real estate people work really hard. I mean, excessively hard. They more than earn their money, and they want to show you how hard they're going to work for you. And you know, half the sellers out there, they've already got a favorite. They, they got somebody. They got an agent they used before. They got an agent their their brother in law. They got an agent their business manager wants them to go with. They just want to make sure that agent does a good job. So they're going to, they're going to give you a shot at giving you your plan and they're not going to use you. I mean, real estate people are probably some of the largest victims of this of anybody in any industry that I've seen. That's right. Yeah. The counterfeit. Yes. Is so they're just leading you along. They're trying to get all those nuggets that you want to give them of, of your special sauce of how you're going to market the property, but they're just really either. And then maybe they're working with a competitor and, and they're going to share that information with a friend who works at a different company. But yeah, that's, so that's an example of the counterfeit. Yes. Yeah. And, and the counterfeit yes is probably the most common yes that's out there. I mean, it, it's gotta be 90% of the yeses that are out there. And the one that we want as salespeople is the commitment uh, or the confirmation. Uh, the confirmation is just where they're they're saying it. We want the commitment. Yes, we want the one that says, "Yeah, this is going to lead to a signature on a contract." Yeah, you know, and I and I got to tell you, when it's important now, I mean, I don't even bother with the word yes. We just it's a two millimeter shift. But all you got to do is is flip your question um, instead of a yes question, make it a no question. Are you against? Do you disagree? Is this a bad idea? I mean, if I have to close and I have to close, you know, we close people with the word. No, I'll, g- I'll give you a quick example. Um, I'd offered some tickets to one of our negotiation training to Robert Herjavec, Robert Herjavec, Shark, a shark tank. Great guy. Wonderfully generous dude. Had, and when I offered him a free ticket, he said, how many could we buy? I'm like, wow, cool. You know, you're going to pay for stuff that when you could have just taken one for free. So we're going back and forth on how many they're going to buy. They can't quite nail it down and we're selling out. My, my people get a hold of me and they say, you close Herjavec on these tickets now or he doesn't get any because we're going to sell out. So I'm in LA with Herjavec. He happens to just be, his office is just a 10 minute walk from my house. And I send him an email at five o'clock in the afternoon and closing anybody is hard, let alone at five, let alone five in LA because on the East coast, you guys start three hours earlier than we do. Right. And I send him an email that says, are you against making a commitment to three tickets now? Are you against paying for them before the business day starts in New York tomorrow? I get an email back less than 15 minutes later. It says, no, we're going to, we'll pay, we'll, we'll commit to three tickets now. No, we will pay for them in the next hour. Send us a link and we'll pay for them right now. So if you really need to close somebody, Figure out a way to close on a no. Are you against working with me? Are you against what I proposed? I mean, you'll be shocked and at the difference it makes on immediate action and also people on the other side find it to be very respectful. Saying no makes them feel safe and protected. And when they say no to this proposition, they feel that you've been deferential and they feel respected. Yeah, yeah, that really right on the point, because for year after year, we would constantly get bombarded with the the yes line of questioning. And, you know, the telemarketers, they try to trap you into yes. And and they want to work for that, uh, that that confirmation. Yes, is what normally happens there. But, yeah, it's it's very interesting. And, and by the way, Chris Voss here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. I'm your host, Brandon Rimes. He's the author of Never Split the Difference, uh, Negotiating as if Your Life Depended on It. And, and Chris, uh Lots of strategies for salespeople out there, you know, mirrors, labels, uh, those are those are two of the core, uh, the uh, strategies in your book or tactics rather, is, is a mirror and a label. Um, real quick, what's a mirror? And You know, the, the mirror is real simple. I mean, it's so it's so simple. People can't believe it works. And it's not the body language mirror. You're not putting your 
hand to your chin if they put their hand to their chin. All it is is repeating the last one to three words of what somebody just said. Just nothing more complicated than that. And it's people reword what they just said. They go on. They explain in greater depth. They feel as if they're being listened to. They feel like they're being listened to, but they feel that the way that they've said it isn't quite right. So they got to they got to reword it instead of just simply saying it again louder. So the mirror is 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 the simplest skill. And some of the smartest people that we coach, that's the only thing they like to do because it's so simple and it's so effective that they don't have to bother learning anything else. Although I'm, I'm happy, you know, I know they're just scratching the tip of the iceberg w- with that. But the mirror is a real simple skill. Yeah, it really is. I love that. And then, uh, you know, get labels there where you can just you say it seems like it feels like or it sounds like uh, there's there's a lot that we could really keep going on. We're coming up on our uh, 30 second point here. But Chris, thanks so much. I really appreciate you uh, being a guest on our show. Chris Voss, author of Never Split the Difference. And if you're ever in Tampa, uh, look us up, man. I'd love to catch up with you. That'd be fun. Thanks for having me on. Thanks so much. Take care, man. All right, that was Chris Voss, author of Never Split the Difference, Negotiating as if Your Life Depended on It. When we come back, two of our expert contributors here in studio, Ray Hall, Ray Hall Appraisals, Richard Alexander, Esquire, uh, Alexander Law. And uh, make sure you follow us online at Brandon Rhymes one on Instagram and Twitter, Consumer Quarterback Show page out there, as well as hitting us up on LinkedIn. We'd love to connect with you there. Our feel-good story of the day is a good one. 101-year-old World War II veteran commissions grandson at Air Force Academy ceremony. Stay with us right here on the Consumer Quarterback Show consumerqb.com thanks for listening to my daddy's show for more information go to consumerqb.com to get in touch with brandon call 813-670-7372 online at consumerqb.com this is the cannabis podcast powered by true leave on radio influence It's an inside look and the scientific facts in and around the world of medical cannabis. Now, here is your host, Ian Beckles. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes.
listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, online at ConsumerQB.com. Brandon is Tampa Bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice. Call Brandon today at 813-670-7372. And we're back. Brandon Rhymes here, Consumer Quarterback Show. Powered by the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty, PlatinumMVPTeam.com. Check out our book on Amazon, Become the MVP in Your Industry by Surfing the Radio Waves. That's our book we published a couple years ago, and that launched us into our business with Ken Shamrock and Des Woodruff. Ken Shamrock's the uh, ultimate fighting champion, Hall of Famer in that sport, also WWE, WWF legend. Ken Shamrock is our business partner on the Business Growth Celebrity Academy, the Business Growth Celebrity Academy. Check out BGC. CA.co, where we can help you become a micro celebrity, grow wealth, build personal brand, and increase your status. Anyone can become a micro celebrity. It's easy, and we'll show you how. We've got uh, webinars running every day at BGCA.co. Check out BGCA.co, and we'd love to talk to you about that. You're invited to Tampa Bay's largest speed networking event, 2.0. This is the second version of our huge event that we do uh, every year. So June 27th, 6 p.m., save the date. It's going to be at the Verizon Center in Largo. Great venue, excellent networking opportunities. Come out and meet some of our expert contributors uh, with the Consumer Quarterback Show. We've got attorneys, CPAs, financial advisors, um, all types of cool partners of the show that are going to be there. Real estate folks are going to be there. Catered food from the award-winning Amici's uh, cuisine excellent food we're gonna have a dj we're gonna have a bartender we've got a raffle going on as well raising money for children's cancer center so it's a great cause come on out thursday june 27th 6 p.m save the date tampa bay's largest speed networking event uh, right here in tampa bay this segment is brought to you by the bill Maher beach resort the official hotel partner of the consumer quarterback show the bill Maher beach resort on beautiful treasure island is our hotel partner make sure you reach out to him let Clyde smith know he's the general manager over there let him know that you Heard about them right here on the Consumer Quarterback Show, the Bill Maher Beach Resort, the official hotel partner of the Consumer Quarterback Show. All right, so first uh, first half of the show, we had Chris Voss, former FBI hostage negotiator, and uh, had a great book that he wrote. I highly recommend that book if you haven't seen it. Now we got our core here uh, of our expert contributors. We've got Ray Hall, Ray Hall Appraisals. Welcome in, sir. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, man. Always good. good. We I talked get... about some valuations today. Always fun. Yeah. Always, always something going on with the real estate market and, uh, you know, always some good tips to give people and uh, things to look out for and, and you know, especially in, uh, in in markets that are changing and, uh, you know, how to, how to prepare yourself for what you're going into. It's a big investment and yeah. you, you want to be prepared. Hot market right now, going spring, summer selling season right now. We're in the middle of it and we've got, uh, we had Diane Vance from Fairway Independent Mortgage on yesterday. She said we took a dip in rates. Rates are at a 20, uh, two year low or since 2017, lowest rates that we've seen uh, when it comes to mortgage financing. Yep. And I've, so that's going to help. I've seen it all in my workflow. I mean, it's just coming in now. Everyone's refinancing and buying those houses. I love it. I yep. love it. That's good stuff. It's very nice. we got Richard Alexander in the house as well. Attorney Richard Alexander, Alexander Law. Thank yes, you, sir. Brandon. I always love coming here, man. Yeah, good oh, stuff. Good. I see you were on uh, one of the news networks as well recently. Uh, listen, I'm just trying to keep up with you on social media. That's, yeah, that, that's my goal. Well, yeah. you do so. You do a good job <laughs> on your social too, man. Some of the things you post are hilarious. Some of the funny stuff on there. Yeah, it's like I have a second job. <laughs> yeah, it is right. Yeah. It, is, it really is. You gotta you gotta be active on social to be right. uh, to be out to be known and people to find you. But uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming in and and uh, dropping some knowledge for our listeners out there. Uh, let's start here with Ray Hall. Is uh, Ray Hall appraisals? When you look at you know the appraisal industry, it's uh, you know it's 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 the part of the industry that's the toughest job, even from a listing side. You know, as a listing agent, I'm a top listing agent with 40 plus listings. And what we do is we, you know, we try to evaluate based on comps. We're looking at the sales comparable approach uh, when we're going out there. We're looking at what's recently sold. However, in a shifting market like this, a lot of weight's being put in some of the active listings as well. Yeah. Now, when we do an appraisal, uh, especially for lending purposes, we can't base our value on those active listings or pending sales. And I've, I've had that come up in the past where, um, you know, I complete the appraisal and they come back to me and say, well, what about all this over here? Mm -hmm. And um, I have to say it's a great neighborhood, but how many sold? Um, so we can't base it, but we do include those active listings and those pending sales because it kind of gives us an idea of which way that market's going. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I may be having sales that are, are indicating a particular value, but if nothing's listed at that price point, yeah. if everything's lower, what's happening to the market? Mm -hmm. You know, are, are the sellers getting desperate? 
Mm -hmm. You know, are the expectations changing? So those active listings, those pending sales that are in the pipeline are are just as important to look at as those closed sales. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. And back to the, you know, the active listings, there's really, you can't put as much weight or credence in those because there's there's no sale. There's no buyer and seller that have agreed to that sell at that price. And then furthermore, a lot of times you're working for the lender. You know, the lender is the really, you know, the one that's got the skin in the game in a lot of cases. They're falling back on that collateral. Exactly, exactly. You know, I've always told folks, you know, you can list the price for whatever you want. It yeah. doesn't mean anybody's going to pay for it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and is it going to sell in that, that normal time frame as all the other, you know, houses that are selling? Yeah. Uh, you know, most neighborhoods in Tampa Bay have been selling, you know, less than 30 days in, in a lot of cases. You know, is that going to happen at the price you want? Right. Um, so that's another expectation that's got to be considered in those valuations and those list prices, um, you know, that those uh, the sellers want. Um, I've had quite a few realtors talk to me and want an appraisal on a house just because the seller won't, you know, listen to reason. Mm -hmm. And and they even say, you know, I even had one come back. She said, I I understand that your appraisal came in low and we did lose the contract. She Mm -hmm. goes, but I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And can you do an appraisal for me Mm -hmm. so that I can talk to these people and, and show them that their expectations are not. Yeah, going to come in with that time frame. The moment the media declares a shift in the market, it's too late. Once once the yeah. media says, "Oh, we've got a shift going," it's too late. Too many people already know about it, right. and then and then sellers are going to be, you know, again, they're overconfident a lot of times, especially if they're for sale by owner. They're, oh, I'm just going to hang it out there, and you know, and then and then at some point, six eight weeks down the road, they actually get realistic, and that's when a lot of times the for sale by owners will commit to listing with us or, or another realtor. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many markets have you seen that's actually started to decline? Or have you seen any of that yet? Um, not really a decline. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, a levelization of values mm-hmm. or sale prices. Not so much a decline yet. And I think uh, the drop in rates that you alluded to kind of helped with that. Yeah. Um, I know the beginning of the year, business had slowed down a little bit for me. I didn't see a whole lot of transactions going on. And then all of a sudden, April, I was busier than I've been in the past couple of years. Nice. Um, so, it, it, you know, it really hit hard. It's leveled off a little bit now. Um, you know, April's usually, especially down here in Florida, in the Tampa Bay area, that's when school's about to get out. Everybody wants to close and move as soon as school's out. So it's really that hot time, especially for appraisers. Um, you know, now maybe not as hot as April, but still, uh, you know, a ton of work coming in. Um, a lot of refinances out there, a lot of, uh, sales going on. So uh, mm-hmm. the market's still strong and, uh, you know, it's a good time to be out there with it. Yeah, it really is. If you just joined us, Brandon Rhymes here. We're talking with Ray Hall, owner of Ray Hall Appraisals, and that is the dot com as well. Ray Hall Appraisals dot com. Ray Hall Appraisals dot com or Ray the Appraiser dot com. Okay, and. The, so the, when you look at the market, you know, you see buyers, of course, buyers want to buy at a right price. They want to make sure they're not, you know, having buyer's remorse a day or two after closing. What do you talk to buyers about or do you help buyers on that situation? Um, I, I have had buyers come to me and ask mm-hmm. for a specific appraisal for them. They don't they don't want the appraiser that the lender is going to send out. They want their own because mm-hmm. uh, they want it to truly be biased. And I think that's always a great idea when you're looking to buy a house. The reason is, is when you're buying your home, that you're going to raise your family in, it's hard to take the emotion out of it. Yes. Um, you know, how many times, especially in your career, Brandon, have you seen a bidding war on a house? Right. But how many times have you seen a bidding war on a car at the car dealership? Mm. Who goes into the car dealership and says, I'll give you 5000 over sticker price because I really want the car? Mm. Interesting. And people need to be careful, especially in these markets that yep. have been increasing. Yep. You don't want to go into that house underwater because if you need that equity later on, it's not going to be there. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you're unsure about that deal, you're, you're getting into with that home, call an appraiser, call my office, yep. go to rayhallappraisals.com. We're happy to come out and it doesn't have to be that three, $400 appraisal that you get from the bank. We do have other valuation um, products that are more economical it's just for your eyes only, nice. and we can help you, you know, make that decision. That's great. So it's something that's that's more affordable. It's just going to be a little bit quicker with a little less detail, but it's still going to give them the overall general. Hey, here's here's the range. Here's yep. your high low. Yes, exactly. And that's it's, important. It's still an appraisal report. It still has all the analysis. I'm just not giving you all of the the information that the lender might require. Right. You know, it's it's got the everything that's required of an appraisal. What a lot of people don't realize is that report for your lender has a lot of information that they're specifically requesting, not necessarily required. So we can do other uh, reports, uh, some called a restricted use appraisal mm-hmm. that, like I said, are more economical, will give you the, the uh, fair value. And, you know, it's a little more for that consumer. 
Yeah, kind of almost kind of like a CMA, BPO, kind of similar. Similar, a little more yeah. information than that. Yeah. Uh, we are going to go into some detail. We do want to make sure that you understand why our value is where it's at. Yep. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, it doesn't have all the all the extras because you have to remember the the lender has us go out there and give a lot of information because other than the realtor, the buyer, and the seller, we're the only person on the side of the lender who goes and looks at the house. Right. So we kind of report a lot of information to them. Uh, just to give them a general idea of what they're looking at in their asset that's going to cover this loan that they're writing. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, best in the business, Ray Hall, rayhallappraisals.com. More from Ray coming up in our lightning round. Uh, up next, we got Richard Alexander, uh, Alexander Law, attorney Richard Alexander, that is. And uh, also our feel-good story of the day, 100, 101, 100 year, 101 year old World War II veteran commissions grandson at Air Force Academy ceremony. Stay with us right here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. ConsumerQB.com. Hey, this is Jarek Robbins. You are listening to the Consumer Quarterback Show with Brandon Rhymes. Please do what it takes to learn all that you have to to live the life you want to live. Live it fully and find a way to give it by paying it forward to others. Get in touch with Brandon online at ConsumerQB.com. This is the Cannabis Podcast, powered by True Leave on Radio Influence. It's an inside look and the scientific facts in and around the world of medical cannabis. Now, here is your host, Ian Beckles. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. Listening to the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. Online at consumerqb.com. And we're back. Brandon Rhymes here, Consumer Quarterback Show, powered by the Platinum MVP team at Keller Williams Realty. Buying, selling, or investing, we would love to talk to you, uh, help you through the process. If you're an agent out there and you want to future proof your business, you got to learn about what Keller Williams is uh, bringing into the marketplace. Lots of cool things. Gary Keller launched a billion dollar tech package. That's a billion with a B tech package. A lot of cool tools that we have. And of course, with our team, we've got our radio and TV show marketing, uh, of course, syndicated on Apple TV, Amazon. 
Amazon, Roku, Sony TV, 85 other outlets. And we're 5 o'clock drive time right here on 1380 The Biz Weekend Show on FM 1025 The Bone. And, of course, syndicated in a lot of different areas. Check out our podcast as well on iTunes, iTunes.com. Download our podcast, The Consumer Quarterback Show. Every day we're going to tell you something positive here in our feel-good segment of the day. Tell me something. 101-year-old World War II veteran commissions grandson at Air Force Academy ceremony. So this is interesting. So the veteran flew from New York to Colorado to commission his grandson, who had just graduated from the Air Force Academy. Joseph Clock is one of the the 989 members of the U.S. Air Force Academy's class of 2019. His grandfather, Walter Clock, was a World War II Air Force pilot. And, quote, I'm so excited for him, Joseph's father, William Clock, told uh, WGRZ. He's fulfilling his dream, and he's also so excited that his grandfather, a World War II Air Force bombardier pilot, could come and commission him. The special moment was captured on camera by the Air Force Academy. Walter received a standing ovation, and everyone in the room was gifted with a memory they'll never forget, the Academy wrote on Facebook. Really cool story right there. Love our veterans, our active military responders, first responders. Uh, We're doing a big event for them next month coming up as well. Um, So... We got attorney Richard Alexander here in the house. And again, you know, I love when you come in and you bring these updates, things happening out there. You're very fluid in the market. You're actually, you know, one of these attorneys that actually goes to court. I see you posting on, I see you posting on Facebook. Hey, I'm at the Pinellas County courthouse. I'm at the Hillsborough County courthouse. So, um, you, you know, you're, you've got trial experience, you're a litigator and also an educator. Yeah, actually, that's one of the ways I brand myself is that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an actual trial lawyer, actually in court. I'm in the pit probably two or three times a week, every week of, uh, you know, every month. So it's pretty active, man. It's a, listen, it's a ton of fun, man. Litigation is unlike anything else. Yeah. yeah. Is, is it almost like, a, you know, play, like back back when you were younger playing sports or something, like you're going into a big game, like it's like, yeah, you know, I'm going into the trial. I got to defend this client or, you know, you're... you're yeah, it's, it's a crazy high. There's no yeah. question about it. I mean, you know, trial lawyers, we're our own breed. Um, we really are. We know uh, the good ones have this, you know, attitude that, uh, you know, no matter what, I got to fight for my client. Yeah. And that's a big part of it. You know, they, they want to know that you, you're fighting for them. Yeah. No question. They got their back no matter what. That's yeah, pretty cool. And, and it's cool that we have a system that allows for that. You know, it that's allows true. for our judicial system is it's it's, uh, you know, you're you're innocent and prove until proven guilty. And, and I know in, in criminal, it's different versus uh, civil. That's a reasonable doubt versus a what is it? Reasonable doubt versus preponderance of the evidence of the evidence. Yeah. So, you know, different there. And that's how O.J. was found uh, not guilty in one court. But then the other court found him guilty, I believe, going back to. Right. In the civil case, he was found liable libel which which okay. is different than you know guilty versus you know not guilty yeah, yeah. two different burdens two different uh, you know two different jurisdictions yeah uh, everything's different from civil to criminal yeah yeah, interesting. So you're helping you're helping folks out here locally, Tampa Bay area with uh, different types of law. Give us an example of how you you like to help people. Well, uh, we we do personal injury and criminal defense, and uh, one of the things I did want to talk about today, particularly Brandon, is there are two bills uh, up at the Florida Legislature with the Senate and the House that's literally going to turn uh, PIP law on its head. Wow. And what that means is it's going to any if you drive a car and have insurance in the state of Florida. If either one of these houses has its way, you will be paying a lot more on car insurance. Oh man, just what we need. It's another, coming. Another another tax, almost right. It's not technically a tax, I'm sure, but it's it's just another way to get in our pockets. Well, what they're thinking of doing, and again, you know, we're going to have to get our staff online with this, is because this is literally going to change PIP law. Mm. And you know what PIP law is in the state of Florida? You Personal have to injury have PIP, protection, right? Ten thousand dollars, eighty percent of uh, medical and sixty percent of lost wages, mm-hmm. but there's a bill in, in the Florida House and in the Florida Senate that's going to do away with PIP. Wow. They're going to have you either just have bodily injury, mm. which is the other person's injury, or the other bill is going to have include med pay. Hmm. Now, I don't know if you know about medical payment, but medical payment uh, will take care of your injuries, but insurance companies want to be reimbursed wow. for med pay. Unbelievable. That is, yeah, I mean, aside from PMI, I don't know another yeah. big ripoff in the marketplace than 
MedPay and PMI. Yeah, PMI, if you don't know what that is, it's anytime you have a loan above 80% loan to value, certain programs, they're going to require an extra insurance that the customer pays, that the borrower pays to protect the lender. So tell me who's stacking those laws in their favor. It really right. is incredible. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're paying insurance so the lender is wow. made whole. Wow. It's incredible. So they're, they're, they're proposing something similar in the personal uh, injury protection uh, automobile law. Yeah, correct. Insurance and, law. Wow. you know, as, as it is, you know, a lot of people carry BI. And, you know, what bodily injury is, it's for the other person's injury. Right. You know, the, the PIP protects you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have PIP, you know, um, you know, hopefully the person that hits you, you better have uninsured motors. And we've talked about this a lot, you know, having yeah. UM coverage. Yes. I have UM the highest I can afford. And I think one of our early shows, I think you were maybe the one that turned me on to that. Yes. And luckily, I said, wow, let me check my policy and see if I had it. I think I did have it. And if I didn't, I just told him to add it. Uh, but it came in handy because I got in an accident a couple months back. And, um, yeah, so, you know, it's very important. That's a big takeaway here is make sure that you have uh, uninsured motorist on your automobile policy, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. Basically, there are three numbers you want to look at in any insurance form. You know, there's, there's three numbers. Let's say, for instance, it has 50, 100, 50. You know, which is what everybody's shopping for when you look at you look at these three numbers. The first number is per person, the second number is per occurrence, okay. and the last number is the property damage, because mm. not everybody has property damage. Right. You know, what if what if your car is damaged and you only have PIP? Yeah. You better have comp and collision, and you're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, so you're going to be paying on debt for the rest of your life. In some cases, if you, especially if you're, you know, running into a gas station or something, who knows? You know, you flip into the gas station, or you you have other people's property that you damaged. Right. So, uh, you know, again, I don't know what's going to happen. It's currently in front of the ho uh, Florida House, and there's mm -hmm. another bill in front of the Florida Senate, but they both they both concentrate on doing away with PIP law. Wow. And PIP law was recently changed, if you recall, maybe a little over 10 years yeah, ago, just, yeah. to root out PIP fraud. Yes. And now they're going to go back in and just totally get rid of it. And that's where the 14-day rule came in. Correct. Yeah, that's so right. this is ridiculous. We got We really need to reach out to our, our uh, you know, representatives and have them understand that we uh, don't want this to take effect. We yeah, want to fight it, it. It's interesting, again, because uh, the Florida governor has line item veto. But I would imagine that they're going to reconcile the differences between the, the Florida House and the Florida Senate. It's going to get to Governor DeSantis, and I'm not sure what he's going to do with it, but I, I don't see it. It's, I don't see PIP law surviving Florida. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to get the word out to a lot of people that it, it's about to change and get ready. You're about to get hit in the pocketbook. Yeah, that's no good. Attorney Richard Alexander, highly respected trial attorney here uh, in the Tampa Bay market. Alexander Law is his company, uh, personal injury law, criminal defense. And, you know, we had Thomas King on the show, uh, Florida Firearms Academy, and, and he was talking about the red flag rule. Uh, the red flag rule, you know, it's another one that's kind of weird. It's, it's uh, I guess I can see the intent of the rule, but uh, he, had a, he had a client or a customer that comes in and shoots at his range, and he called him one day and, and said, Hey, man, the cops are at my door. What should I do? They want my gun. They want my guns. They come in. So they didn't even call him and question him or ask him what what the situation was. But the red flag rule, apparently, it's another one of these kind of, uh, you know, where, where, and he says, well, did you have anything go on in your life? What changed recently? He said, yeah, I broke up with my girlfriend. So she had must have dropped a dime on him, said, mm -hmm. hey, this guy's acting irrational. So that's where the red flag rule comes in. But all these different things, you know, then, and then they don't call him or get his side of the story. They just bust in his house demanding his guns. So it's kind of scary. Did they have a warrant? I don't think they had to have. Maybe they did. But the red flag rule is what Thomas kept talking about. And, and they, yeah, they came in and, and didn't ask him his side of the story or nothing. They just took his guns. Yeah, domestic, domestic situations are always very tricky. Yeah, they it really is. are. It really does. It gets crazy out there. Uh, let's jump into our lightning round here. The lightning round! I am so good at lightning rounds! I majored in lightning rounds. All right, Ray Hall, Ray Hall appraisals. Give us some nuggets of advice, sir. Uh, you know, if you're going into that home, remember, this is one of the largest purchases you're ever going to make in your life. Um, you know, you always want to work with an experienced realtor, but... It, there's nothing wrong with getting an appraisal before you go ahead and put that offer. You know, you want someone who can go in and estimate that value without having that emotion. It's yes. a very emotional thing. Um, I, I know even myself, I, I, I got in the same situation when I purchased houses. Um, you know, call a professional who does valuations on a daily basis and know that you're going into that home now with lower risk of being underwater. Yes. Because in a market like this, you want to be very careful um, what you're paying for that house. Yeah, eliminate buyer remorse. Yes. Call 
Ray Hall appraisals. Exactly. <laughs> Attorney Richard Alexander, Alexander Law, give us some nuggets of advice, sir. Uh, I preach this all the time, uninsured motorists. You know, UM coverage on your policy, uh, you have to ask for it. It's a special rate. And UM stands for underinsured or uninsured motorists. Mm-hmm. Trust me, if you get into an accident and the other person is not covered, they're driving illegally with no insurance, mm-hmm. you're going to thank the stars that you have UM coverage. What percentage of drivers do you think don't have coverage? Have you seen any studies or stats on that? Uh, no, I haven't actually, but it's rare. A lot of people don't have it. And, yeah. You know, uh, they just they don't know about it. Yeah. Because the insurance companies don't have to offer it, and uh, it's a you know it's an extra policy. It's a, it's a different surcharge, mm-hmm. but if you think about what you're getting, you know, it's worth the money. Yeah. And it's not a lot, too. It'll add, like, I don't know, $7, $10 to your to monthly policy. Yeah. Well worth it. And in protecting yourself, protecting your assets, it's, you know, because you can get sued. You know, they will turn around and sue you personally. Mm-hmm. They'll sue you. Absolutely. You know, they'll, they'll sue your corporations. They'll sue yep. your uh, Aunt Susie if they could. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If she was in the car. Yeah, she's getting sued. Right? Yeah, exactly. There you go. All right, Ray Hall, Ray Hall Appraisals, Richard Alexander Esquire, Alexander Law. Thanks so much for coming in today and uh, educating our listeners out there. We want you to please go out there and consider committing a random act of kindness. Pack up some food or clothing. Carry it with you to and from your commute. Hand it to that person that you see in need and be a force for good in the community. We'll see you next time right here on the Consumer Quarterback Show, ConsumerQB.com. You've been listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. Whether it's real estate, consumer, or financial advice, let Brandon call your next play. Contact Brandon Rhymes at 813-670-7372. That's 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com. And join us next time for the Consumer Quarterback Show, weekday afternoons at 5 on AM 1380. The Biz. Are you a real estate agent looking to take your business to the next level and supercharge your marketing? Hi, I'm Brandon Rimes, owner of Platinum MVP Realty and host of the Real Estate Quarterback Show, syndicated radio and TV show talk program on iHeartRadio, 1025 The Bone, daily 5 o'clock drive time on 1380 The Biz, and our TV show is on WeBeam TV. We're looking for real estate agents that want to join our team and supercharge their marketing, utilizing some of our innovative strategies. We utilize the Real Geeks platform, Facebook marketing, internet marketing, and a lot of the traditional methods as well. Postcard mailers mailed for you. Postage, signage, business cards, all paid for by the company. Aggressive real estate splits and ways to help you win in any marketplace. We need you to go out, take applications, and work our plethora of leads that we're generating on a daily basis. Reach out by clicking the form below and we'd love to have a confidential interview with you.